Hey, what's going on? And welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about Jitter Aim. We're going to be going over what it is, how to do it, as well as when you should be using it in game. Jitter Aim is a recoil control technique that is based on a hidden underlying game mechanic that has existed since launch called recoil smoothing. Recoil smoothing, without going into too much unnecessary detail, is something that makes controlling the recoil of any gun significantly more easy as long as there is enough movement of your camera. I assume this mechanic was added as a quality of life feature for controllers specifically, but it's something that mouse and keyboard can benefit from and and take advantage of because there isn't an input lock. The idea of Jitter Aim is to move your camera very rapidly in place to basically cancel out the recoil of almost any gun. If you were to take the small rapid movements of your camera and add them up, it ends up being enough to activate this mechanic. From experience, this works more effectively against horizontal recoil than vertical recoil, so do be prepared to pull down a little when you Jitter Aim. Jitter Aim is going to be most effective when used against targets at longer ranges that have low strafe speeds, such as as people that are aiming down sights with ARs, LMGs, marksman weapons, or sniper rifles. It's also going to be effective against people that aren't moving very much relative to you, such as people that are looting a death box on controller or have very small angles or peaks or head glitches against you. Uh, but relative to where you're standing, they're not moving at all because you might have a sort of a 90 degree crossfire on them. I'm going to jump into the firing range with Daz. I'm going to demonstrate how to jitter aim. I'm going to answer some questions about it and teach y'all everything that I know. Let's jump into it. So, Hollow, I want you to explain to me, what are you doing when you jitter aim? I am tensing my muscles in my forearm and or my wrist. I am flexing them. I am exerting them, like almost overexerting them. And that creates a lot of shakiness and a lot of movement in my mouse by extension, which allows me to achieve that four degrees per second of camera movement, but really rapidly in place. So if you were to take the movement that I'm making back and forth, the way that I do that is just by tensing and flexing my muscles in my forearm and my wrist. What guns are best to jitter aim with on Apex Legends? Any assault rifle and any LMG. So right now that would be the R3, the Spitfire, the Flatline, the Hemlock, even the Rampage, uh, even with its slow fire rate, the Nemesis, the Devotion, the L-Star. Um, all of those guns are really good for jitter aiming because of the fact that they deal enough damage to properly capitalize off of you, you know, controlling the recoil, that kind of a range. The, the effective range of those weapons is made so much longer than it already is. Whereas with an SMG, the way the recoil kind of works with how fast it fires and with how quickly you're left with no bullets in your mag, it kind of just leaves it ARs and LMGs the better choice. My next question for you would be, why not use an SMG for this? Is that even applicable to use an SMG when jitter aiming? You can. Uh, there's players like Senox who previously played for Sentinels that have sort of shaky, jittery aim at the same time, clean, smooth tracking you know with the four degrees of camera movement that you need to activate recoil smoothing it's much easier to do that with the strafe speed that you have because you're moving so much more it's a lot easier to achieve the necessary camera movement just by moving and by aiming along with it you also like one of the better ways to kind of combat recoil would be anti-mirroring so whatever direction the enemy is moving you move in the opposite direction and that's usually enough to cancel out the recoil. Whereas with an AR, you have a 50% strafe speed reduction. And so things like jitter aim become necessary uh, to be able to dial in the recoil to that degree. How do you jitter aim without hurting yourself? Because it is, as you mentioned, a rapid fire movement. How would you recommend people are safe when trying to practice this, especially? Um, the biggest thing that comes to mind would be wrist stretches. Uh, proper stretching, proper warm up, and proper exercise. There's plenty of resources available on the internet. Another thing that I would do would be to just not if it hurts. Um, everybody's different. Everybody has a different hand, <laughs> different arm, and some people are more suited to do it than others. And if you happen to be one of those people that just isn't suited to the idea of jitter aiming, I wouldn't recommend it. At the end of the day, uh, it's entirely possible to farm damage for your Evo shield, uh, get a knock or do anything useful with the damage that you would normally deal with jitter aim just by, you know, closing some distance or using other kinds of weapons. Um, it's not worth your health in the long run. Um, it's not some game breaking thing that is, you know, 100% applicable and useful in every single fight. But again, wrist stretches, proper, you know, health and care, and then just not doing it if it gets to a point where 
you feel like you're going to develop an injury. How would you recommend somebody practices this? Is it important to know the recoil pattern of even the gun? I would say that knowing the recoil and going out of your way to practice controlling recoil from the standpoint of memorization is useful and valuable because it can help aid in how you control it through jittering. A lot of the time that you would be jitter aiming, um, people have the opportunity to pop a bat or even res if you knock them. Um, one of my best jitter aim clips was on the top of containment, uh, uh, jitter aiming a guy with a charge rifle and I one clipped him, uh, if you want to show that. <laughs> um, what people don't know is right after that clip, we pushed up that hill and died and lost the fight because the guy rezzed and healed the full because I knocked him so far away. It mostly has content value and then damage farming value with like evo shields or trying to get 4Ks or 3Ks or whatever. And last question, because it's always, this is always a big controversial su subject, jitter aiming. It's always, every time somebody sees it, it brings up the controller versus MNK debate. Is this cheating in your thoughts? If it were, I would rank it significantly far beneath the automation of input required for controller configs or just even abusing bindings in .cfg files, macroing through any sort of Logitech software. Um, in my opinion, this is just something that exists in the game and something that exists as a result of an input differential. <laughs> I think that we, I actually am of the opinion that recoil smoothing was introduced for controller players to help, you know, create a little bit more of an, I don't want to say easy gameplay experience, but that's the only word that really comes to mind um, because performing the necessary movement to control recoil on a thumbstick is hard enough as it is. And so I feel like it was introduced to make things a little bit more palatable when it comes to, you know, people that are strafing or tracking targets that are moving on really wide angles and whatnot. It is just M and K being the better input in that specific area and in that specific field. I don't think it's cheating. If the developers want to patch it out, all they have to do is introduce an input lock and make it to where for the entirety of a given match, you either are forced on controller or M and K input, um, and then they can just take it away from M and K if it's really that big of a problem. But there's so many other things that they would need to address before that would even be an issue, in my opinion. Well, that was me giving as much insight as I can on the concept of jitter aim, of jitter aiming. I hope that those of you that are wanting to leverage it to farm uh, some clips or farm higher damage games or just get more value out of ARs, especially in this SMG driven meta, I hope it helped. Uh, if you found any of the content in this video informative educational or even entertaining do consider leaving it a like that would help me out a lot and if you want to see more content like this be sure to subscribe if you have any questions be sure to let me know in the comments and yeah i'll see y'all next time